All right, this website, TED Power. It's actually a British website you can see in the address, mm. but the information is really good on here. So I actually wanted to look up assimilation. We're gonna click on this one. Sharing this tab, yes. I'm still sharing this tab. Um, I don't know how, hold on a sec. Okay. This is the tab I wanna share. Okay, we did it. <laughs> Thank you for being patient. So this is gonna seem really weird because it's, t it's telling you to take away and change sounds between words, but okay. if you say it quickly enough, it will work. And I think I've talked to you about rainbow before, how I don't say rain bow, I kind of mm -hmm. smoosh them together and say rainbow. Rainbow, So yeah. um, like, like help, how I put that tongue out for healthy, like that, it's like mm -hmm. those types of movements. So the first page is, or the top is, T changes to P before another bilingual sound, sorry, biladial sound, which is, bilabial sounds involve both your lips, so that's mm, mm -hmm. B and P. So mm -hmm. basket maker would be basket with a P, basket mm -hmm. maker, like that. So instead of landing on that T, you're just gonna kind of eat the T as you're landing on the M simultaneously. Basket uh, maker, basket maker. Try it. Basket maker. Does it feel weird to say the P instead? Um, I'm not sure. How would I usually say it? Do some more. Basket. basket. Oh yeah, basket maker. Yeah. Which, oh yeah. Hmm. Never noticed that. The, <laughs> I know that's why it feels weird because you're like this is wrong mm -hmm. i wasn't taught english this way but just try it it's kind of a trick to trick your mind into assimilating the sound is this a p again or yeah are it would be like mix, mix bag like that mix mix, mix mix bag you have to do them you have to over if uh. you do them too slow mix bag it, uh. it separates them so they need to be like mix, mix bag. bag yeah mix bag like that does that uh. feel weird um, Try more without me. I mean, it feels weird to do, but it sounds right. It, if that makes sense, like it I hear myself right. do it, and it's mm -hmm. like, why didn't I do this all the time? Because <laughs> your system didn't want to mess up. This yeah. assimilation is like a shortcut, and it's kind of like taking. It's like it's being lazier. So, mm. especially Germans, it's, pe people who speak German, like you're taught English very um thoroughly and correctly as children. <laughs> like your english that you learn as children is like more sophisticated than the english that is acquired by english-speaking native children like native english-speaking children does that make sense because mm -hmm. it's like you're educated on it and you have correct you know um, would you I show mean, up somewhere and say there's some seats or would you say there are some seats i would say there's some seats and it's mm -hmm. grammatically incorrect but that's how a native speaker would say it right you show up somewhere and you're looking for oh, seeds? Oh, yeah. I, I acquired there's some seeds. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> but, but, that, but that was after I moved to the UK because yeah. people also say there is for everything. Uh, there is it, there is a bunch of spaces in the bar, that yeah. kind of a thing. Um, that's grammatically incorrect, but it's actually like socially correct to say mm -hmm. it like that. What, what, <laughs> what I cannot get over is less and fewer. That one bugs me too. It really stresses me out, and it's gonna it it's it's progressing into normal speech. <laughs> it's one of those things that I'm like, no, don't do it, because I know in like a couple of generations' time, it's just gonna be less for everything because people are gonna forget when to use less and when to use fewer, yeah. because there is already people in our generation who don't know what the difference is now, so they're not gonna teach their kids, and then. At some point, people are not going to know anymore, and then it's just going to be less. <laughs> and it'll almost be like a, a, a um, an old fashioned like holdover for people who are like correct about their English. Oh, kind of like a bit, a, a bit when like older people say Chesterfield for the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Chesterfield, it's official sounding. Yeah, at, at choice, not at choices, but at 
whole foods, or as I like to call it, whole paycheck foods, there's an aisle that says 10 items or fewer, but every other grocery store says 10 items or less. So I'm like, ha, ah, that's what you're paying extra for is the grammatical mm. correctness of the sign maker. <laughs> My boyfriend won't let me go to whole foods because it's too expensive and too hippie -y in his opinion. <laughs> yeah. You, you go in for a couple things and you're like, why did I spend $87? Like I was. Yeah. But it makes you feel really good because you've just spent $87 and completely sustainable detergent <laughs> <laughs> yeah there is that kind of that feeling like mm -hmm. that's raw that's that's valid for sure <laughs> okay i, I will continue with now. the exercise <laughs> <laughs> um best man good mixed blessing perfect hat burglar burglar Clerk. Burglar. Just a gentle, quieter, smaller at the end. Cat Bur burglar. 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 Yeah. Do you hear how if I did the glur on its own, it's like nothing. It's like glur. Le. Uh, okay. So it's like Cat bur burglar. 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 Yeah, that falling Cat is necessary burglar. for that ER sound, or else it's too too strong. Oh, yeah. Burglar needs to be soft. Mixed marriage. Cigarette paper. Paper. That ER? Uh, cigarette paper. Yeah. Paper. 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 It's like glur. It's small. It's itty bitty. Paper. That. That's it. Mm. That. Duh, duh. Mixed metapha. Mi Mixed metap. <laughs> Mixed metapher. Metap? That is an interesting. Metaphor. 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 Yeah. I know that. That's an interesting variation on that. M mixed me metaphor. Metaphor. It sounds it sounds kind of fancy actually. Yeah, no, I've never but I've never said it in that way. <laughs> it's just because I was focusing on the P is so I was like Yeah. It's like who knows if these are real words or just letters typed <laughs> out to make you be like put your lips in a certain way, you know what I mean? Mix mixed metaphor. Mixed metaphor. Mixed metaphor. Nice, perfect. Mm, circuit board. Excellent. That R in circuit? Circuit board. And board. Both of your R's were flawless. Pocket money. Good. Yeah. Coconut butter. 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 Yeah, just a little er at the end. Coconut butter. Good. <laughs> Coconut butter. Mm. Sounds tasty. <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking at my other screen. I'm just looking at my other screen. And, uh, and I don't know how my um, my boyfriend has tagged me in something. And I'm going to put it in the chat. And people who are watching the recording cannot see this. But it's a, it's a meme. Um, <laughs> and it says, Americans be like water bottle. And he tagged yep. me in it. Um, water bottle. Water bottle. British people be like, water bottle. Water bottle. Water bottle. I, can't, uh, I can't paste it in the chat, so I'm going to have to send it to you after. Yeah. I love a meme. Honestly. Memes um, world. Um, where am I? Uh, po uh, post mortem. Excellent. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. The assimilation was excellent. I just want to hear the OR sound in mortem. Mm -hmm. Mortem? Yeah. So try and think of the uh, mortem, that word. First syllable, M-O-R, big. Mm -hmm. Second syllable, like D-M. Mortem. Mm. Post-mortem. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Court material. This one, court martial. Oh, I yeah, sorry. It's the same I, letters as material, though. My sorry. reading is not great today. <laughs> That's Port really Marshall. Good. Yeah. Marshall. Material is good, too. <laughs> yeah, actually. got to be able to say that, too. Pot plant. <laughs> pot, like pot plant? Pot plant. Pot plant. Pot plant. We have to remember that this is British, so maybe 99% mm -hmm. of it is going to apply to us. So, mm -hmm. pot plant. I don't know. Pot. The ah uh, might be. Pot. Pot. Maybe bigger. 
pot plant. Mm. Pot plant. Well, try not to worry about individual examples too much. Yeah. All right, next one. Uh, direct method. Try this with the Schwab replacing the dye. Uh, direct method. Yes. Direct. This was direct. part of my feedback, actually. Yes. I'm going to write down this type of word and then make sure I don't forget. I think diverse and diversion and die. Uh, I wrote it down already, <laughs> but I want to make sure I remember it now. Um, and then we've got uh, private property. Good. Yeah. Property. Property. So the per and per. property, it has to be like proper, proper. property. Private property. 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 Good. Nice. That's excellent. Let's get access. Uh, dust bowl. Good. Yeah. Dust bowl. Dust bowl. Dust bowl. Put back. Excellent. Fast. I don't know if this one works. Fast motion. Fast. Try instead of thinking it, you're replacing it with a P. Try and think that you're yeah. just like taking the T off on some of them. So it's like fast motion. Like oh, fast okay. Motion. Fast motion. Yeah. Just because doing the T there would be like fast motion, and it's like a bit mm -hmm. too much in between. Yeah. Fast motion. Fast motion. And we've yeah. got put by. Perfect. First base. Excellent. Nice R. Right pair. That R was flawless. Goodness. Flight plan. Excellent. Secret police. Try it with the P or secret. Secret, secret police. Secret. If it doesn't feel right to do it this way, it's like you don't, you know, take what applies and then leave the rest kind of mm. thing. Like in the Secret. end. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I'm not happy with that, but there you go. <laughs> Foot break. Excellent. Set point. Front bench. Sounds good. Set back. Excellent. Front man. Front man. Front man. The un is like a little bit like uh, un. Front. Un. Yeah. Front man. Good. Set piece. Excellent. Root machine. Root machine. If you do it with a, a really soft P. Root, root machine. machine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I couldn't work out how to place the P in there. It was like, there's too much of a stop. <laughs> fruit. Yeah, fruit machine. <laughs> it just turns into nonsense after enough. Yeah. This is like... What? Sheet metal. <laughs> Sheet metal. Nice. Sheet metal. That flap T you got, that was really good. Good dark elf. Great Britain. Fabulous. It's a grape from Britain. <laughs> Great Britain. <laughs> yeah, you a good winery name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually find pretty good English wine in the south of England now. Hmm. It's. Um, I'd recommend. <laughs> sit back. Um, harvest moon. Good. Harvest moon. Yeah. Soft porn. Sounds okay. Hatchet man. Hatchet man. Yeah. Hmm. Hatchet. It's like hatchet man. Kind of a weird word for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these examples are not good. <laughs> Split p. Split p. Split p. Split p. Sounds good. Uh, hit man. Good. Uh, where are we now? Um, split personality. Good. Your flap T was really nice on that personality. 
I just want to hear a little bit stronger the ER sound and purr, that schwa R sound. Purr, okay. Split personality. Yes. It's a lot happening to do that R mm. and the assimilation and the flap T. So split it's okay. personality. We'll do it all eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Hot metal. Hot metal. Hot metal. Sounds good. Uh, street, uh, street piano. Excellent. Hot money. Good. Yeah. Sweet basil. Basil. I say basil more in North American sounding. <laughs> yeah, Sweet basil. basil. Just think of Basil Faulty from Faulty Towers. Basil, and was, the British Basil was one <laughs> thing that I was really, when I moved to the UK, I was so confused by it because I've been told that it's called Basil and I couldn't work out what the British pronunciation is. And I worked in this restaurant with all Brazilians and they call it Basil. Oh no. And I didn't know what they were talking about. Like, let me check with the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> it sounded a bit like like an air freshener. Like I just from the sound of what they were saying, I was just, do they mean like <laughs> I need to put an air freshener out or something? <laughs> like Basil. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a funky one, Basil. It's like Brazil, Brazil. but better. It's a, a spice. Um, <laughs> how do we get to uh, left bank? Good. Oh, I think we missed this middle. Last oh. post. Ah, last post. Good, good. And sweet pea. Perfect. Sweet pepper. Good. Light bulb. Excellent, yeah. Sweet potato. Excellent. Light music. Good. Test ban. Excellent. So it's kind of like the S is like a bit longer and it, it's doing the T already and you don't really mm. need to do the P, but your mouth goes to a P kind of like, yeah. how are you taking this, the suggestion of dissimilation using a certain letter versus just being aware that. I feel like, um, as you gave me the different options to try, I found it easier to just like, um, think of general assimilation rather than force myself to do a P necessarily. So you just tone down kind of the conjunction between the words and you make them sound like each other a bit more. And that sort of does, does the P sound by itself. Yeah. Uh, but I can see how for other learners, it would be way easier to just say, do a P. <laughs> yeah. Just try it, see if it works. Cause it might kind of show you like, Oh, I've been, I've been doing it this way, but I could take a shortcut. Yeah. Ooh save some time yeah this list is like it's a long list so um, we don't have to do more than the t assimilation right because there's like t to p uh, a to b n to m t to k so there's nine of these assimilations that'll happen so we'll just do we'll do one at a time so you don't have to like that changes to sure yeah like um like, like nice shoes. I'm not saying nice shoes. I'm saying nice uh, shoes. So if it was uh, yeah. moist, like, mm. um, okay, like, said changes. Well, I we'd have to look at that section for an example, I guess. But it's kind of like how I say meet you. You know, mm. you know that Coldplay song, the scientist come up to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> um, find you. So find you also gets that assimilation. So that's kind of like that, I think that said. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. We should we should do that. The meet you, meet you, this get you, betcha, get like that kind of assimilation. We'll do that next time. That at ya. Yods getting turned into affricates, it's called. <laughs> affricates. Affricates. Yeah. To me that always sounded like African, but it's not. It's affricate. <laughs> All right. You don't get a field trip to Africa out of it. <laughs> no, unfortunately. unfortunately. <laughs> we got really far, actually. If we get to, I think we got to light music. Mm -hmm. Test ban. Test ban. Okay. Test ban. Excellent. Keep going. You're doing really well. Uh, light meter. Good. Nice. And the ER at the end? Test match. Perfect. Um, 
Light middleweight. Yeah. Middleweight. Let me hear middle. Middleweight. Uh, yeah. Let me show you what you almost sounded like. Middle, mm -hmm. middle. You want middle, uh, middle. Sounded a bit German. Sounded a bit German. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear light middleweight with that middle. Light middleweight. Yeah. Nice. And the W is excellent. Good job. Uh, test paper. Good. And the ER and paper is perfect. Market price. Good. That man. Excellent. Yeah. Midnight blue. Perfect. Unit price. Good. Mint brush. Uh, mint bush. Excellent. Yeah. It's gonna say mint brush. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like brush. Um, wet blanket. Yeah. Wet blanket. Wet blanket. <laughs> But sometimes you'll want to emphasize, so, you know, retain the ability. I, to I took too long of a break because <laughs> then it naturally, like, n I feel like now that this has been, this seems like one of the ones where once it's been pointed out to me, it'll be easier for me to just go and do it. Um, yeah, you'll start hearing it around you too. And like, yeah, even seeing like the lip movement and like, ha ha ha. Like, <laughs> Because people are making, they're making the sound, but they're simultaneously closing their lips. So the sound gets swallowed and not surfaced fully. And that's how that basket, I, I might be touching my T here for basket, but if I'm closing my lips at the same time, it doesn't even matter because sound isn't allowed out. It's like basket simultaneously. And that, that <clears throat> movement is what is difficult. It's too much happening at once. Private <laughs> bill. <laughs> Good, private bill, nice dark L. Fabulous. Um, white bag. Good. Private member. 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 Yeah. You'll start self-correcting on that one soon, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, um, you almost have it. Um, white birch. Yes. Nice R on birch, too. Uh, birch. Private patient. Excellent. White meat. Good. Private parts. Good. Nice R sound. White paper. The R on that was great. Private practice. Private practice. Do you feel comfortable with this T assimilation, maybe? Well, maybe not comfortable, but aware. Yeah, it it's it's good for like like I should say awareness. It's good for awareness. Mm -hmm. Um any that you want to mark down as tough to do to try again later? Or you think ah, um, that's fine. <laughs> maybe need that we're hard. Uh, obviously, any of the ones that include THs. Mm, okay, mm. that's good to keep in mind. I feel like that was that was that was one that I noticed specifically. Was it direct method? That was one of the ones. Uh, direct method. That was one that had. A TH right at the start in one of the. Yes, let us find that one. So, TH. That man. There it is. I was looking on the left, but that man. So, direct method and that man are good. Mm -hmm. We're going to write those down into your document in, in like a second. But also, ones that have an ER ending and it's the specific ER, like paper pepper yes so let's write those down too from the top so we're gonna go yeah to good call back up to the top basket maker okay that'll be one and we don't have to get every single one but you could do three of them and repeat those twice instead of doing six different ones and the brain counts that as just as good in fact slightly better stimuli because you're using fewer examples um does that make sense when you uh, are practicing, you don't need to do 10 examples, but you could do two examples five times or five mm -hmm. examples two, two times, and it would be more effective. Oh, because it's easier to, I guess, yeah, it sinks in more because, um, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. I'm thinking of, I don't know if you come across that YouTube channel, I don't remember the name, but there is a guy who, he's from northern england and he does accent videos and uh he 
gives all of these language phenomena like a different name to remember them by. One of them is street shopping. Uh, is that the assimilation of the street? Yeah. Sure. Nice. Is it the guy with white hair and he's like, yes, oh, I'm going to show you. And they're like really scientific. Don't remember his name now, that but yeah, it's great. pretty yeah. scientific. And then he does examples and it's despite it being super scientific, it goes, it's really clear what he's on about. Yeah. I'm like, I wish my videos were that good because his videos are really good. Um, he's yeah, but he, this guy's been at it a long time. <laughs> this guy's been at it before I was born. Before either of us were born, this guy's been teaching English. So. <laughs> um, and I think he jokes about that too in his videos. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. like, I've been at this forever. And he's written books and stuff. Yeah, I, I yeah, he, I've learned a lot from him actually. Mm. I, I feel like I've learned more since completing my linguistics degree than during my linguistics degree. And like the information I got from that allowed me to process the other information. And like, if I had to do my degree again, I would be able to ace everything because now I have this like looking back understanding of things. So I don't know what, what does that mean? But <laughs> So I'm still writing down the ones with ERs. So I got cigarette paper, I'm gonna go coconut butter, butter. And that is four examples. So you could do those four, you know what? And if you feel like, oh, I wanna do the other ones, so do these four twice, for example, and then the next mm -hmm. time you practice, do a different four ones twice if you want. Mm -hmm. um, but there's research that shows that you don't need ex excessive amounts of stimuli in order to generalize what's happening. And oh, okay. Generalization is that kind of idea that uh, I'm going to apply this rule to the other things that fit the pattern, but your brain is going to be testing the pattern for a bit first. So that's why people sometimes come to me and they say, my speech is getting worse. What did you do? What have you done to my speech? And it's like, that's because mm -hmm. you've learned a pattern and your brain's testing out where it applies. Mm -hmm. So um, that can sometimes cause, I probably mentioned this before, but French speakers to start using THs for their Zs instead. Mm -hmm. So they'll say like, this is a theater instead of seizure. Mm -hmm. So they're testing, oh, does this TH go on that Z or that S sound? Because um, the French are using TH. Oh, yeah. I, place. yeah. So yeah. I, I did that. When you took me through the TH lessons, there was I started using THs in places where they didn't belong, um, but I sort of didn't even question that because <laughs> I was just like, "Oh, my brain's learning, so it's trying to put it everywhere, and it's yeah. just working out where it belongs." <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's your brain applying the pattern, and it's like there's a, a bit of uncertainty at first, and that's people can second guess themselves and think, "Oh no, what have I done with this speech coaching thing?" But if you stay the course, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like getting sore from working out and being like, "I'm never doing this again." But like getting sore from working out is what makes you stronger. So you have to do a little bit of that, but with this. So in order so that you have all that stimuli and then you have the choice of which ones to do, I'm just gonna write down three more of these ER endings. Mm -hmm. So let's see if there are more. Huh. <laughs> ah, sweet pepper. These are, a lot of these are food. <laughs> and then light meter, there we go, light meter. So going back into your document to type these in. And okay, so assimilation practice. If you are going to practice, you don't need to do the whole list because mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't difficult for you to just pop that sound in. Mm -hmm. So you could do a few of them. And then making a sentence about them would make them more difficult. So like. I can always say it doesn't have to be Shakespeare. You could just say the, I don't know what sweet paper is. Sweet pepper. Let's say, for example, so let me just hear that with the stuff in mind. Actually, hold on. Oh, and you might need to reshare the document because I'm still seeing the original. <laughs> page there you are so um the sheet of uh i'm just i had like sheet of paper didn't work because you need to do that yeah assimilation sheet like that there's 
the cigarette paper was on the light meter. Excellent. And the R's in all of those was really good. So that's the target and you nailed it. Now, make one up um, using a couple of the other um, pieces. The basket maker's recipe required sweet pepper. Fantastic. So you could do these, you could say these three or four times. Um, or you could, like I said, take take the ex existing stimuli and like just recycle it and recycle it. So you don't have to make a new sentence for each thing, but that will give you practice. If you practice them alone, repetition is good. Um, you told me that practicing with sentences made it made the exercise more be like not more better. <laughs> um, more effective. I too. feel like I, I liked. Um, you've given me like stories and paragraphs and stuff, and. I find I find that more interesting, just because um, I will then make mistakes. But because if I'm paying attention to something and I'm recording myself, I will notice that exact thing and then I'll correct it, and then it's not very interesting. So <laughs> if, if I do like a paragraph or a story, there'll always be something that I miss. Um, like with the American story that I recorded for you, that was like the fifth or the sixth time I recorded it, but because I had to perfect it and I was noticing different things. So um, it's That's pretty great. good as like, <laughs> because you, you pick stuff up as you go along right? <laughs> yeah i quite like that if i have a paragraph or a story that i can read to myself and then record it definitely buries the target so much that it makes it like that much more difficult um and i was going to check with you to see if do you find in your in your just normal speech that you're not filtering like when you're totally comfortable and relaxed and you're just talking are there any changes to that speech yet? Do you find stuff showing up and yourself correcting in some in that, that during that um, time? I think so. Yeah, it highly depends on who I speak to, which I didn't expect. Uh, uh, so there are people who um, there are people who are used to me speaking in a certain way because they met me before I started working with you. And I feel like there is like a switch in the back of my brain that goes, this person expects me to speak in a certain way, so I should continue speaking in that way. Ah. And then it's very interesting when I meet complete, completely new people, because then it comes out unfiltered. And it was very, it was very interesting for, um, my boyfriend to observe because we went to a, uh, went to a birthday party the other day and uh there was uh a, a new person there who I, met, I hadn't met before and a bunch of other people who i'd met at different times that i had different like levels of relationship with yeah <laughs> and he was observing and he was like and he was like depending on like how much history you have of a person um how much you apply what you've learned changes which I hadn't realized as strongly, but it's true. That is really interesting. And I'm glad that we talk about this stuff. <laughs> Changing your speech is not just a muscle movement. It's like a psychological process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist, but like our brain undergoes these kind of predictable and categorizable stages when we're learning stuff like this. And um, it's different for everyone. So yeah, this this kind of makes sense. You're talking to different people and your brain is just like doo -doo -doo, adjusting as you go. And then new people, it's like, okay, they don't have any previous experience with my accent, so I can just talk however. Um, that's kind of what it sounds like. So yeah. your brain isn't doing anything wrong. It's a completely normal process for this to happen. Um, when you accommodate new information or you assimilate new information, it just, it takes a while either for it to show up consistently um, and like I said, part of that is a psychological aspect of, and you don't even think about it, right? You're just sitting, you're just, you've sat down with a person or you're sitting down with a person and you start talking and it's like this automatic filter that's come on that you don't have, have a choice sometimes, yeah. right? <laughs> that filter, that filter is like our language experience. Like we can't, it's like, we can't take it off and look without it. It's like, mm. we cannot remove that because that's, that's shaped our brain. Um, but 
luckily for you, you had English experience in childhood as well, just, just as a normal part of life. And that gives you a, a confers a cognitive benefit, as I like to say, <laughs> by having that information introduced at such an age means it's more deeply stored in your brain. So yeah, you're better off than someone who learned at age 25, basically. Yeah, for sure. Um, what do you think are, are there any barriers or blocks to you making changes and what do you think they are? And if you want to like talk about them or work on them or tell me about um, them so I can like think of stuff to, to talk about next time. I don't know. I don't think there are. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't thought of any. <laughs> so the process, if I can just ask, any. yeah. If I could ask you to compare it to something like going to the gym, mm -hmm. do you think it's the same kind of process? Like I'm learning a new skill with consistency and experience and exposure. I understand that it will become more and more automatic over time. Do you feel that way about your speech? Like as long as you keep showing yeah. up to the gym that you know, things will move forward for you and yeah. then you get stuck on anything? Yeah, I think I I think I'd agree with that. Yeah. Excellent. That's that's what I like to hear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, comments, or concerns about the process so far, or things that you would want to share with someone that's watching and learning about it? Like um I I think I'm learning a lot about myself in the process it's uh maybe uh, maybe not just accent coaching also doing like a bunch i'm i'm using all of my in work benefits to like do other stuff as well at the moment so it's kind of like one piece um i like i i always wanted to do speech coaching and it's been like it's taken me such a long time to actually go and look for a coach um and i should have done this a lot sooner and having done this um like it, it enabled me to do other things like um i i i can access career coaching through work to sort of work out what i want to do when i grow up <laughs> and i'm doing that as well and um uh i've uh i've done a bunch of work on like optimizing my work life balance in the last few months and it's been really good um and it's giving me more time to for example, do my accent exercises. <laughs> so um, it's been a nice rebalancing all over. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know, that, that, was like, that was like an arc to what I was saying, but I'm so, <laughs> sort of forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I was just typing down kind of what you're saying. Sometimes we look back on it later and we're like, okay, I, I remember what happened during that session. Mm. So sometimes I do that. <laughs> Um, no, I would definitely encourage people to try it if they want to. Um, if they're unsure, they should just do a discovery call with you. <laughs> yeah, and if it is, it's like heck. If they don't like me, I can tell them someone who can help them. I have yeah. colleagues and friends that are um, more experienced and have more education and have a bigger scope. I can refer people to those types if need be. You know, I'm not always going to be the expert on what someone might need. Um, so that's why I will refer to speech therapists, for example, or executive uh, public speaking coaches, for example, for those specific mm -hmm. types of issues that people want to work on. I really yeah, want to uh, do, yeah. so one thing that I'm really interested in trying out is I haven't done a public speaking event in a long time because uh, in my current job, everything's remote. and. I am very interested to see what accent I would use if I was to do a public speaking event because before the pandemic I did conferences a lot and people were always commenting that I basically spoke something a lot like a much posher version of my British accent when I was doing presentations and when I was doing conference speeches. And I'd be very interested to see what happens if I go in front of a conference audience just for my personal, just, just, just to satisfy my personal uh, curiosity. Unfortunately, like uh, with my current job, it might take a while for that opportunity to come up. <laughs> <laughs> I can always like have a fake presentation with a fake audience and it's hard See, though, right? I don't think that would work though. <laughs> I feel like it would have to be the real deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do notice that um, 
I think I sound more American when I do, I do a lot of call, like presentation on conference call, presentations on conference calls and um, in, in meetings and stuff and it's all remote and I have noticed a difference there. Hmm. Um, again, particularly if it's new people, but also with existing people, but maybe slightly less so. Yeah. It's it's interesting. <laughs> it's pronunciation, pronunciation of particularly, by the way. That's that one's tough for even me. <laughs> particularly, particularly if it's new people. Um, that is interesting. So. You never know what's going to come out until you start and you might not be able to start until the situation is right like a presentation that actually has people there it's like i don't know i'm a musician we've talked about this in the past like i can play a song i'll be practicing and it's like yes i'm ready to record i pop my phone on i'm recording and then i've forgotten how to play and my hands are made out of meat yes <laughs> and it's like I just had this i just nailed i was chris martin you know i'm playing the cold play song or whatever and now it's like so it's like stage fright for me even if it's just recording on my own phone by myself so even i get that so i just mm. i just trying to relate to you that like i think that's normal <laughs> we we need like the right context and the right situation to stimulate us to like rise to the challenge and perform basically right like yeah you can't like you can't reach your potential unless you exhaust kind of exhaust and challenge your existing potential and a lot of us won't do that on our own in our living rooms because <laughs> it's like awkward and weird but uh yeah that's how you build capacity just like with athletic capacity or cardiovascular endurance the speaking thing is going to take a while it takes some changes and um nobody but you understands the work going on behind the scenes right mm. nobody you talk to knows all the work that you've been putting into your accent and they might say oh, i haven't seen you for a few months you sound a bit different and they won't appreciate the amount yeah. of magnitude of work that's there. Like, but it's okay. Like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not necessarily. I'm not necessarily doing this for other people. I'm doing this for me. Of course, <laughs> yeah. It's like a personal goal. I often say to people, if you want to have a native English accent, that's like the six pack abs of speech practice. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like if you're the type of person that shows up to the gym and says, "says I want six pack abs," and you're you're going to do that, then that that and motivation that energy that drive that self-discipline that's kind of the same amount of energy required to do an accent so i make that comparison it's um, it, it's the relevant comparison it's a bit like <laughs> like yeah the, like yeah the the reason i don't have the reason i don't have abs is um i i like bread too much <laughs> oh, yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you know <laughs> but i mean you you're you're an athlete you you run a lot so you know that, that it's time it's time it's it's grinding like on a consistent basis right even if bread bread i wanted to make one more parallel and i, I don't know if i've said this to you yet but i like to just like leave this in people's minds so learning a second language is like learning to kick or throw a ball with your non-dominant hand or leg right so let's say you grew up playing soccer. Let's see if you can play another kicking game with the left foot, for instance. Mm -hmm. Changing your accent. So learning a second language is like learning to use your non-dominant foot for a sport. Changing your accent is like using your non-dominant hand to write. The fine motor control is so much more detailed, so much more complex, right? There's gross motor movements involved in kicking, throwing, but in order to to finally write, and this is what stroke survivors have to do as well. If they mm -hmm. lose part of their strength on their side of their body, they have to relearn to write with their left hand. Most of the time, people are right-handed, and um, at first, your your writing is going to look sloppy, but with enough consistency, like people adapt and they completely um, can learn to write with their non-dominant hand. So that's the level of detail we're talking about. It's a lot of detail. It's um, it's adapting parts of your brain to grow and to kind of fill in with like dendrites and connections. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if I said that that non-dominant hand, non-dominant leg thing before, but I feel like that's like a really good an an I analogy. I don't think you said that before, um, <laughs> and it is a good comparison. 
to some, it might be discouraging, like, oh no, learning to write with my non-dominant hand. Oh my gosh. But like, it'll happen if you put, if you put work in it, if you do 15 minutes a day, I've been playing my piano an hour a day and now I can play a bunch of songs. I just learned in the last few weeks. So at any age, at any time, you can learn a new skill. I'm learning piano at 37. <laughs> and it's like, it's not easy, but um, it's worth it. The, the time that I put in, even, even if no one sees the time behind the scenes, like all the work going on, it's at any age, basically. Yeah, and you need to you need to want it. That the, That's also so important because if you, if you're doing this for anyone apart from you, you're most likely going to lose motivation at some point. <laughs> it's a personal goal, like six pack abs, mm. right? If someone had an ex external goal, like, oh, my boss said I need six pack abs. It's like, why would you go do that if you weren't personally motivated? That's yeah, why I don't I'm, take, I don't take clients, like uh, companies that are trying to get me to give prospective employees, um, an accent that they need to keep their job. I'm like, I'm not going to take that on. I refer that to a different professional mm -hmm. because if, unless the locus of control and motivation is inside, that's not my job to try and motivate that person with the <laughs> external locus of control. I put that person to a speech therapist because um, the speech therapist can talk about all the psychology involved in that. And it's like very complicated. And plus people take speech therapists more seriously. They cost it twice as much, so they're gonna like put more effort and put more respect to that person because they're so mm -hmm. educated. So I sometimes have to avoid taking students on because they won't recognize, um, they won't take seriously my level of education compared to someone like a speech therapist, mm -hmm. which is fine. I'm not, um, this type of coaching isn't for everybody. So um, yeah, people need yeah. to have access. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit here. I should like, I should no, let you move on with your day. It's but, all good. <laughs> um, good work today. I noticed you putting the assimilation right into practice. So I think <laughs> over the next week you're going to hear it around you, and you're going to just absorb a lot of that. That's and notice that. That's something yeah. that I love about um, the work that we are doing together because uh, I hear this stuff I, I like we go through something and then i hear it <laughs> um, you notice it in the world around you. i, I know I, I noticed the thing that we've done that week in the world around you and that plays into my practice which is really really good excellent well keep doing keep up the great work you know you're doing great um you have people rooting for you 30 people watched our last video so at least 30 Yay. <laughs> seeing the change so that's it's awesome. our, that's it's our first step towards being youtube superstars that's right <laughs> <laughs> it's like eventually and then and then i can hire a videographer that does all the cool stuff that the guy has that the old british guy has and um i should call him the british guy that's not very nice but <laughs> no the, one knows who we're talking about it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> until, until he finds this, yeah. In the comments. Until he finds me, and then oh. that would be that would be good for visibility of the video yeah, because like, we could oops, do a video. My video blew up. <laughs> <laughs> I offended someone. Yeah, <clears throat> that's how you do it. All right, Daniel, I'm gonna let you get on with your day. Otherwise, I'll keep laughing. But really nice to talk. Have a nice evening. As usual, have a nice evening. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>